call has been organized uh, to kind of give a sense to people on what uh, the workshop is going to be, the eight-day workshop. Because sometimes it's difficult for people to imagine what is this eight days, what are we going to do there? So this is an opportunity to people can also ask questions about this call, about this workshop. And the recording will also support other people in understanding what this program is about. Over to Mickey now. I was thinking, given the number of people who are on the call, I think we can hear from every single person, whatever you want to say about yourself and whatever questions you have about the program, uh, what draws you to it, what you want to hear from me, why you came to the call, anything that you want to say, and I will just engage with however many people uh, want to engage within the 90 minutes that we have. It seems very spacious with this number of people. And I, I love to have, um, you know, dialogue. I don't have anything, like I didn't come prepared to say anything, just to be here available to people. I'm, I'm already feeling excited because um, I'm reminded of the time when I was in India a few years ago, and uh, um, I feel so at home in India in a very strange way. Um, there's something about the way that Indian people relate to each other reminds me of the ways that I grew up, which is, I'm not from the United States, I'm from Israel. And even Israel of now is not the Israel that I grew up in. Uh, but there's something that feels familiar to me. So it's, it's very happy for me to engage with people from India. So anybody could start who would either want to introduce yourself or ask a question or anything. Go for it. You can uh, unmute yourself. Suma. Yeah. Uh, hi, Nikki. Hi, Shami. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Suma and Mickey. I want to know uh, what is this? Uh, I wouldn't be able to join for the first uh, four days. I would be able to join from the 9th to the 13th. Can you hear what I'm saying? Mickey? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay. So I'm going to join from the 9th to the 13th. And uh, I want to know is, have you uh, kind of, you know, is there a set plan? that you're going to be doing, I mean, are we going to have uh, some kind of an agenda that, you know, nine o'clock, this will happen, 11 o'clock, this will happen, time okay. for questions. Okay, so um, um, the way that I conceive of things, uh, more and more over time, I have an, an intention and a commitment and things that live in me that I want to bring and then I am in service to what happens in the moment, which doesn't mean that I give up on what I want to do. Um, and I also don't impose it. So I, I am in dialogue with reality. I don't try to force reality and I don't try to give up on the plan. So um, it's a dance that happens. So um, in terms of the actual schedule, I'm thinking that I don't even know if Shami set up an actual schedule of what he would like it to be. But my guess is that um, a, a lot of this um, can be um, uh, decided together. And that the process of co-creating what we do and how we do it is part of what I want to bring now to everything that I do. Because um, when I look at, the, at where the world is, there's way too much that happens in the world based on people waiting for somebody else to tell them what to do, whether they like it or not. And that uh, if we are going to change the way the world is, and at this point in my belief, we either change the way the world is or we are on the path to extinction as a species. So I feel a sense of profound commitment everywhere that I go to leave people behind me who are more willing to stand up to authority, 
who are more willing to step into shaping reality rather than, okay, reality has already been created and I either fit in or I don't. And if I don't fit in, I will just survive here on my own and wait it out. Do you know what I'm talking about, Suma? Yeah. Uh, so I, I missed that one sentence you said about the last part. Uh, people once, who are, people once who are, I leave, once I leave, I'm going to be there for a certain number of days. I'm not there for the rest of your life. I'm going to be there for a certain number of days. That's my chance to support whoever is there in taking charge of life within and around them. I can't do that by being the one that decides what is going to happen. Because if I decide what is going to happen, it's not going to leave you with the capacity to then step into a relationship with life of where you are shaping, you're part of shaping what is happening. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I can't tell you what will happen. I can only tell you what my intentions are. Okay. So I'm hearing that um, I'm hearing that I had something more to say. Can I? Yes, I was just making faces because there was an echo. Um, and for, for the echo, I muted somebody and now there's no echo and I can hear you. So please speak. Okay. So I'm hearing uh, the last thing that you said was that you can't decide on what's going to happen and it's going to be co-created. And you also have a plan that you're coming with. Uh, so with this information, I'm just wondering that I'm not going to be there for the first four days. Is it going to be a problem? Is, is that going to be? No. Great. Thank you. No. Um, and, and, here's what, and here's what I mean. One of the things that I think we need to learn to work out. I'm sorry. I keep needing to mute people when they come in. So... Um, I, I, I just, I'm going to do that, oops, as often as necessary. So it sometimes means stopping when I'm speaking. So, um, so one of the things that I believe those of us who want to create a different world need to work out is something that for me is like, there is a spectrum about participating in decision making. It's not on or off. So what we are used to is this on off switch. The off switch is, you know, one person decides everybody else follows. You don't like it too bad. Go someplace else. <laughs> I mean, we all know that one. We've been there on both sides of it, most of us, many of us, right? Um, and then um, the other side of it is now everybody has to participate in every decision. And if somebody wasn't there and they come, now we have to undo all the decisions that we did and we have to start from scratch. You, you, you understand what I mean? That is not a functional way to be. So if you come after four days, that means some things will already happen. So you're not coming from scratch. You're coming to join something that is already operating. But you, once you join it, it's not exactly the same thing that it was before you joined it. So you can dance with it and see what happens. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. All right. And there's one more question about the part where you mentioned about co-creating. So I, uh, in my understanding, we are people from very diverse backgrounds who are going to come and they're going to, there's going to be a very large uh, number of participants. 
I don't know how many. Uh, Shami, do you have a sense? Yeah, around 100, probably. 100. Yeah. That's a great number. I'm saying that's a great number because it's large enough that it forces us to be creative. You know, if you have 15 people, you can just say, okay, we'll just go around the circle and everything will work out. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? If it's a small group, you can kind of lean on what you already know. But if you have 100 people and you want to be co-creative and you want people to participate in shaping things, but you don't want to be in discussion all the time, you've got to learn to be more creative than that. That's, that's very exciting for me. Thank you. Thank you, Miki. So I am really looking forward uh, to being part of this co-creation and how you managed to do it. I don't and know. <laughs> find out. <laughs> okay, how we managed to do it. There you go. There you go. That shift, that shift is what I want to create. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm really looking forward. And I want to I wanna tell you, the fact that India has been so heavily colonized, makes that task more difficult and more urgent. Uh -huh. Because there are patterns that roles that have been assigned to us. Um, uh, the task of uh, co-creation, you mean? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. It is much harder to do co-creation when there are patterns established by colonization. So we have to yeah. deep- The pattern of, servil of servilience, of servitude. That, yeah. And the path of me without thinking that I'm doing it, deciding for you because I can't read the code that says that you are saying yes, but it's actually no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not really, but I'm waiting to... Okay, let me explain it. When there's a power difference, I can be, you know, very earnest and say, is this going to work for you? And you can say yes, because that is what colonization trained you for. And if I don't think about it and give it my full attention, I will believe your yes. Because part of the colonization is that you do it in a way that is so friendly. It looks real. <laughs> but then we're not actually co-creating. So on both sides, we need to do work in order to co-create. Okay. Just a comment on that. Uh, yes, uh, I agree with you that colonization makes this... Uh, you know, peculiar, you know, brings up this peculiar thing. Uh, other than even colonization, this thing also happens in parent and child relationships because <laughs> the child also just, you know, uh, yes. so that's another place that this happens. Uh, yes. Just yes. And this is why patriarchy, which comes before colonization, started before colonization. Patriarchy, one of its core values around the behavior of children, if you think about what is a good child, a good <laughs> child is an obedient child, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, I I'm, I'm, I'm glad confused. you don't know. Because if you don't know, that means you're a little bit free. But if you look at the cultural value, what's the cultural value of a good child? Yeah, yeah, obedient. Exactly. Yeah, good girl and good boy. Exactly. And if you're going to be obedient, good girl, good boy, that prepares you very well to be colonized or to colonize. Yes. Do you see? Yes. So, so I, my task, if I want to, to support co-creation, is to decolonize me 
support you in decolonizing you and constantly work with everything that comes up so that we keep sub subverting obedience. Okay? Now she says, oh my God, what am I going into? No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I need to figure out a way to come to be there for the first four days also. There you go. I don't miss out. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, who, oops, who else has a question or a comment or something that you would like to know? Uh, Mickey sitting next to me is the training team of Jaipur Rugs. Yes. So uh, we are very, very curious to meet you in the coming uh, year, January. And uh, uh, we really welcome you to India and to Jaipur Rugs. And uh, we are really uh, looking forward for that transformation in Jaipur Rugs also. We, we are expecting the, uh, that uh, maybe you can help us uh, bring that transformation into Jaipur Rugs uh, because we work here as a family. So we have made a lot of experiments earlier uh, in, with, uh, in collaboration with Shami and uh, Shami has explained us a lot about NBC earlier. So yes, it has really impressed us and uh, as we come to know that Mickey is coming to India and uh, uh, she would be explaining more about it. Uh, that has uh, uh, you know, really raised our expectation a lot. I'm more interested in knowing what exactly you would like to receive. Where is there a place where how you function is not giving you the results that you want? Yes, uh, Mickey, I, I will talk only about Jaipur Rugs here as, a, as an organization. Uh, we, we are really working on how to bring collaboration into our system because right now uh, every individual is working on his own and uh, is uh, you know working in his own style and uh, look things as he wants to say it. But uh, we also find that collaboration is the only way where we can unite ourselves and could, could work on a single goal. Uh, in benefit of organization. Yeah, I don't remember the order of of the three parts. I'm sure Shami remembers, but one whole segment mm -hmm. of the workshop is called collaboration in the workplace. Yes, yes. And, and here is what makes collaboration in the workplace different from collaboration, let's say, with friends or with family, which is that in a workplace you have something to do, something to get done, some particular purpose. You're not just about connection. And a lot of times, people who learn NVC forget that connection is not always the end goal. Sometimes connection is the means to support another end goal. And if you have something to produce, connection looks different. Collaboration looks different. If there are power differences, collaboration looks different. And all of those things, we can look at them because what you're dealing with is collaborating for a shared purpose that is outside just your own individual well-being. That makes a difference. And that, yes. that is something that um, um, we, we can't do it here you know, because that's a whole workshop. But that's the premise of those days, that on all levels, uh, from creating systems that are designed to support collaboration, to creating teams that have collaborative principles built into them, to interpersonal relationships that are attuned to the challenge of collaboration, to the internal orientation that I'm here to collaborate, not to either get my way or give up. On all of these levels, there are things that I have learned from my work with organizations that I have been able to put into A, B, C, D, simple principles, simple practical principles that help people collaborate. I'll give you an example of what I mean by principle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday, I was with a group of people um, who are all in positions of um, influence either in some organizations 
or in philanthropy. So these are people who have a lot of a lot of power already. And we were talking about the question of trust. Um, because one of the challenges that we have all over the world now, and definitely within organizations, is that we operate very often in low trust environments. And a low trust environment makes it really difficult to collaborate. So we were talking for a whole evening, what are things that you can do? If you know that, what are things that you can do to build more trust, not just over time, over the next three years, we're going to build trust because we will deepen relationships and blah, 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 and all of that. That's well and good. But in this moment, if I sense that the trust is low, is there something I can do to increase the trust? And, 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 and for example, if I, if I think about what does it mean when I don't trust you? What does it actually mean? If I don't trust you, one of the things that it means is I don't believe that you care about me, that my needs matter to you. I believe that you only care about yourself and whatever your project is, but I don't count. I don't matter. So if we know that that's one of the things that happen when there's mistrust, then I can immediately start asking myself, what are things that I can do to demonstrate to people around me that they matter, that I care about their needs, that what they say will influence my decisions. That is a practical principle. If I want to increase trust, I focus on giving the other person the experience that they matter. How I do that is practice, but the principle is simple. Do you see what I mean? Right, exactly. So those are the kinds of things that I anticipate we will be talking about in the days that are focused on collaboration in the workplace. Right, right. So, uh, Mickey, we uh, also uh, read the content that uh, was shared on the mail uh, by Shami, which also speaks about that how leader, how it will be helpful for leaders uh, in the organization. Like, uh, uh, it, it will speak about uh, team cohesiveness and uh, more focus on the organization goals. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Can you say it again? Because I couldn't make out all the words. Yes, sure. So we, we were going through the content shared by Shami uh, this morning that uh, uh, how it will be helpful for the team leaders uh, that as it would be covering the, uh, how to increase the team cohesiveness and how to bring everyone in sync with the organizational goals. So uh, this is the challenge we are into right now and uh, we are really looking forward that this workshop could really help us to eradicate this challenge. It, and it's also wonderful. It's wonderful if you're coming there as a team, yes. we can use you as a case study. Right, that, that would be a great idea. And yeah. uh, we, we are also looking forward that how uh, can we take NBC forward when uh, Mickey will return back to her country. Uh, so, you know, some, something that can help us develop some content about it so that whenever some new people join us, we can really pass on that to, thing to them so that they will be in sync with the culture of the organization and the transformation we are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that I talk about a lot is that not everything is individual skill. That's why I'm talking about systems. The yes. kinds of agreements that you make as an organization in terms of decision making, in terms of feedback, information flow, all of these things, the agreements that you make either support collaboration or diminish collaboration, either support trust or diminish trust. So how the systems are set up, and I'm talking about systems, I mean the agreements, the procedures, the decision making tools, all of the nitty gritty things that you do on a daily basis, are they set up to support the purpose and the values that you have in the organization? That's a big part of the work, not just how do we train individuals to have the right skills, but how do we set the structural conditions so that people can thrive here in collaboration with each other? Right. Uh, so, Miki, I have a question for you. 
How is this program going to help the middle management and the lower level interests of the organization? I'm sorry, I, 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 I can you ask it again? <laughs> Yes. So, Mickey, my colleague is asking a question. It's that how is this program helpful for the uh, lower level of the organization and for the middle level of the organization? Uh, are they going to be in the workshop? Yes, they will be there. Yeah. So, here is here is the reality. If you are a lower level manager you have three different types of collaboration that you need to have. It's a very difficult role. You need to learn how to collaborate with the people who have more power than you. And that means collaborate is different from saying yes, yes, yes all the time. So if you want to truly collaborate, with the, with your boss you need to learn how to be able to speak when you think that the plan or the idea that the boss has is not actually going to serve the purpose for which the idea is there that be, that's a very difficult task and that's one the second is the, the lower managers need to collaborate with each other horizontally to be able to to collaborate so they're not in silos, right? And then they need to collaborate with their own teams. So there's a, it's almost all of what a, a middle manager does is collaborate with someone. But most middle managers don't think of their role as that. So, so part of it is is you know what is it really your job it's to support the, the um you know higher level managers in carrying out their purpose in a way that is aligned with the values and with everything that is going on within the organization to support yourself and the other uh, managers in being as um synergistic as possible and to support your team in coming together to strive and collaborate in service of the purpose that you that keep refining and and um what's the word and uh translating into concrete tasks that's all that it is so did i answer the question I didn't yes, see. Yeah? Hi, Mickey. This is Satish from Jetrax. And uh, I have a question that is uh, how this collaboration can be uh, become a tool for coaching and mentoring of the employees. Because the challenge that I feel here, what I find here is uh, everybody is in their silos, as, as Siddhartha has previously shared. So my question is how the collaboration can be a tool for coaching and mentoring. How can I become a medium for that? Yes. If you want to empower someone, offer them um, input instead of decision. First thing. So if I'm your boss and I want to empower you, I don't make a decision for you. I tell you, here's my input, what I know from my experience, what I have seen, what the pitfalls are, and I'm giving you this input. You make the decision about what's gonna work for you. I'm not gonna make the decision for you. That's one. Second is coaching instead of directing. What does coaching mean? Directing is I tell you um, how to do it, but coaching, usually involves asking you questions. If I ask you questions, then you grow in your capacity to think. And I can ask you guiding questions that point your nose in the direction that comes from my experience, but doesn't replace your experience. 
then I can accelerate your learning based on what I already know. So that's the second thing. The third thing is offer feedback. If the person doesn't do it the way that you think works, offer them feedback instead of criticism and punishment. And ultimately offer them unconditional backing. If you don't offer unconditional backing, people will be too afraid to step into power. And it's very difficult for managers to do that sometimes. So you need to be really clear with people about what are the parameters of empowerment. So we don't pretend to give people authority when you really don't. Do you know what I mean, Satish? Yeah. Uh, one more thing. What is unconditional backing? I, I like to know. Meaning, if you made a decision that I don't like, I work with you on how to deal with the results. I don't undo your decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. I mean, if you're going to make a decision that's going to kill people, that may be something else. But fundamentally, if it is not like a truly harmful decision, then I want to engage you in thinking through what to do with the results instead of so many times I've seen managers just say, you decide, and then the person decides, and the manager doesn't like the decision and says, no, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to undo it. By the third time, the person will never again make a decision. Do you see that, Satish? Yeah. yeah. But it's not easy. Yes, that's difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, I look forward to meeting you soon. Exactly. We are, we are actually eagerly waiting. Eagerly. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. All right, who else? Mickey, I have some questions uh, based on the conversation you had with Jaipur Rugs. Should I put it on the chat or can I just ask? Uh, I would be happy for you to ask and also others, yeah, because... This was a lot, it was very packed, so I'm happy to, if other people ha also have questions about it. Um, since you already spoke once, can you wait one second to see if other people might also yes. have questions or comments about it before, and maybe it will cover what you wanted to say and we hear from more people, yeah? Yes, thank you. Anybody else, any questions or comments from what we did with Jaipur, Jaipur Rugs? Yeah. Parul? Parul, is that your name? Yeah. Uh, I am not a part of an organization directly. And so I want, I'm not a part of an organization directly. And keeping that in mind, how could I uh, uh, make use of the workshop? I'm, I'm sorry. If you're not part of an organization, how can you make use of the workshop? Yes. So um, I think that the part that is about organizations is two days. Am I correct, Chami? You probably remember better than me. He posted that there. So it's like uh, working for transformation? No, no, it's the collaboration in the workplace. That is uh, three days. Yeah. Three days. Okay. So if you're not, if you're not part of an organization, um, then you are learning principles of collaboration that, will, that you can apply to other contexts. Uh, what are you part of? Uh, do you not, so do you work? Are you an activist? What is your life like? What is in your life? I work as a counselor. So I work with uh, teenagers and adults and have one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions and I also share NBC in uh, Okay, so for example, your clients might be working in organizations. Yes. So if you learn things at the workshop, you can help them navigate challenges in their organizations uh, with, with a wider set of tools. That's an example. Right. And I have another question. Um, yeah. 
how could I come prepared, more prepared for the workshop? So. I missed the word. How to, can I come to what? How could I come more prepared for the workshop? What could I, what could I do in addition in terms of reading or watching something? Um, um, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, there is, there, did, did I give you handouts, Shami? I don't, I don't, do we have, do you have handouts? No, no. Okay, so um, I'm putting it on my list to send you handouts, and if you have eager people that want to read things ahead of time, send the handouts ahead of time and people can read them and feel more prepared. I'm writing me a note to do that right away. Thank you, Miki. Okay, so Suma, you have questions. Do you want to ask them now? Uh, I'll just type them uh, and I'll ask them later. Okay. Um, Okay, so there are handouts. We have, you asked about question, handouts. Do you have any other question about the conversation with Jaipur Rags? I, I think I'll just type them out. You can do what? I think I will just type them out. It type will be them out? Easier. Yeah, I'll type them out in the chat. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, meanwhile, Rosie. Oceans, oceans, hand also up, and maybe Rosie oh. also. Yeah. I, don't know. Um, I can't remember the order. Who was first? Did you notice? I think Ocean, or maybe. Okay. No, but I think we can start with Ocean, and then you can come to Rosie. Okay. Wait, it's not letting me unmute you for some reason. I don't know why. Can you do it? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Hello. Good morning, Nikki, and good good morning, everybody. Um, I I have a I think simple question because I am quite new to NVC concept, and uh, I've done uh, one convention and a few uh, introduction uh, weekends. And what I'm struggling with is um, to apply NVC uh, principles because I feel some kind of, um, and forgive me for these words, I feel like I have to learn something artificially. It's not yet coming from me, from my inside. Yes. So I would like to understand understand if you if I could benefit coming to your workshop because what I'm looking for is for that transition yes I, I think I would be I would be very good for you in that regard because um, the way that I work is um, not using formula I don't work using formula um, so for example I mean it, it, it's different in each uh, moment but let's say that you want to practice certain dialogues. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to then do if you practice a dialogue would be to do the following. And you will see that that you can do, that it's not going to be artificial. Step one, find the deepest truth about yourself that you want to communicate to this other person. The deepest truth about yourself, not about them. The deepest truth that you can find. Anybody can do that. Second, put that truth in language that has as much care as you can possibly bring to it. You can do that. Third, ask a question at the end that will support the conversation in going forward. Mm -hmm. Now, this requires practice, but it, there's nothing artificial about it. Do you see what I mean? Yes, yes, I, I do. I actually watched your workshops, which were, I think, in Orissa in 2009 or 10, 
and I could feel that is something like I'm really longing for that uh, authenticity. Because that's, that's me. That's my middle name. I don't have a middle name, but if I had one, authenticity would be it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to say one more thing, which is that when I give a title to a workshop, I actually mean to focus on what the title is. It's not just a name and then all the workshop days are the same thing. There is a body of work that I developed on each of those themes that, we're, that I'm planning to cover. How it will happen and what the focus is and the relative proportion will come in co-creation like I talked with Suma. But it's not all the same. Not every day will be the same. Okay, let's go with Rosie. I'm having this, okay, there you go. Great. Okay, hello. Yeah, thanks, Mickey. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so, um, having heard for the last, I don't know, year or so now, a lot of your recordings and being really, um, yeah, your style helps me a lot. So I'm really excited and confident that that the sessions will be really helpful. Um, and I'm really particularly um, eager for what comes of the practical support in the various contexts that I'm in. And so I'm a foreigner living in India. And so a lot of my contexts are me as a foreigner supporting various either uh, NGOs, NGOs or organizations um, through sort of a voluntary role. And so when you were speaking with the Jaipur Rugs group, I was really excited about what you were saying about building trust, but also um, uh, like not, not making decisions for people, these kinds of things. I've experienced myself in that role often that I'm getting a lot of yeses and I know it's from respect for me either as a foreigner or even if I'm supporting financially or whatever it is that they receive from me. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the areas I'm bringing and I'm also hopefully going to be bringing the CEO of one of the, the groups that I'm working with, which is a safe house for trafficked girls. Um, so I'm really excited about how I'll be able to support her in applying it in the safe home where I'm a counselor. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm not actually, maybe I should have started here. I'm not, I don't have a question per se, but I'd love to fill you in on the context that I'm bringing. I, I, um, think, that, I think that the thing that, you know, working out your relationship with the people that you support so that your power as a foreigner and as the person who um, writes a check doesn't interfere mm -hmm. with people's agency yes. to do what's right for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. All right. So I'm going to now look at the chat because Suma has written a lot of stuff in the chat. So let me read it. Um, 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 you're saying that the thing that I say about trust that uh, can come from doubt about whether the other person cares, you say this points to some sort of hierarchy of needs. I don't believe in a hierarchy of needs. I think what happens is that needs constantly rearrange themselves in terms of what takes priority moment by moment. It's not like I have some need that is always more important. 
for example, even you can say, you know, the need for, you know, survival is more important than other things. Not always. People have, throughout human history, have chosen to willingly give their life for something that was meaningful to them and valuable to them beyond surviving. So there is, I don't see, see any static hierarchy of needs. I just see that moment by moment, if we are conscious, we are rearranging the needs inside of us and, and keep choosing. Mostly that happens without conscious choice. Just the more conscious we are of what needs are really driving us in each moment, the more choice we have, how we can respond to what life dishes out. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just reading this. Yeah. You're talking about feedback. Um, and you're saying that the way that you experience feedback does not motivate the person to do what I'm suggesting. Very definitely, in my plan, offering feedback is part of the plan. How to offer feedback in a way that uh, increases learning. It's not that the purpose of feedback is not to get somebody to do what I want. That's not feedback, that's coercion. The purpose of feedback is to increase learning about how we together can serve the purpose for which we are collaborating more effectively. If you think of it that way, you will give feedback differently. And there are also practical steps that I plan to cover. I do want to warn, not warn is not the right word. I, I want to make it clear to be transparent that I have way more that I know, that I have thought about, that I have written, that I will di even discover together and all of that than could, could fit in those days that we are together. So some things will happen and some things will not, not happen. And that goes back to the co-creation. For example, if you are the only person in the whole workshop that wants to learn about feedback, probably we won't have a session about it. Probably I will tell you, you know what, why don't you sit with me at lunch and I'll talk to you about feedback and the problem that you have. Do you see what I mean? And that'll be great. I am, I, I would be totally surprised if you are the only person that wants to learn about feedback because it's a topic that usually many people want to learn about. I'm just giving it as an example because overall, I'm not going to be able to do everything that everybody wants. And um, anybody who's ever been in a workshop with me knows that when I am with people, I am all there from morning till night. You know, the meals I'm available, in breaks I'm available. I need to take some break for myself to be able to breathe. But fundamentally, I'm there to serve. So, okay, next. Um, so if, if, if someone that I'm coaching made a decision that had negative results, that is the time to really focus on learning. What can we do together to mitigate the negative results? And what can we learn? What can you learn so that next time you make a decision that is more on target? If I fix your decision, you won't learn. Yeah? Yeah? Um, I do have a question. Somebody's asking, uh, you're asking if I'm planning to get some books. I do have three books and um, I'm just curious, Shami, do you think it would be a good idea to send some books so people can buy them? Um, so, um, Shami, um, 
Why don't you connect with Rebecca? Connect with Rebecca at bnpc.org to plan it. And I'm guessing as soon as possible so that they have a chance to get there in time. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How do you pronounce your name? Laila or Lila? Laila. Laila. Okay, and you have uh, Echo. Uh, is it better now? Yes. Uh, so I want to understand the third part of the workshop, which says convergent facilitation. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean and what is it going to be about? Um, convert. I'm going to mute you while I'm speaking so there's no noise that comes from you, okay? But I don't seem to be able to do that. It's not letting me mute you. Hmm. There. Okay, so convergent facilitation is a process that supports um, collaborative decision making in a group. So if you have a whole group of people that is trying to reach a decision in a collaborative way, this part of the workshop will teach you how to do that. So, um, you know, in a lot of places, what people do in these kinds of contexts um, is, um, is either one person decides and tells everyone, or there is a majority vote, which is a majority tells the minority what to do, or you have endless discussions that don't go anywhere when you try to reach some agreement that is going to work for everyone. And this is gonna give you tools to make the process of actually creating a decision that really works for everyone tools to do that in a way that is systematic and moves forward and isn't uh, just going, in, going around and around in circles. That's what it is. So for example, what do you do when you have a proposal and there's some people who don't like the proposal? How do you move from there in a productive way forward? How do you extract from everything that everybody says principles that they can all, all they can all agree on that will inform what proposals they create there's a, a a lot to it how can you make sure that people stretch into willingness and generosity without breaking down into giving up and compromising all of these things we will we can focus on during those those three days yeah Okay, what else? Shami, you feel free to ask questions also. Okay, so okay, just here's this. Someone. Uh, here's someone. Yeah. Uh, that is. Um, uh, so someone is asking before the, pers the first person, Sonal, where, where is that person? Ah, there you are. Is it similar to sociocracy? Um, um, so in some small ways, yes, and in most ways it's different. Uh, the biggest difference that I see is that in sociocracy, in order to reach a decision, you always ask the same question. Do you have a paramount objection? And in convergent facilitation, um, you can ask different questions that is easier or harder to say no to. You know, if I, if I put a proposal on the table and I say, do you have a paramount objection? You might not raise your hand. But if I asked, do you have some significant concerns? You might raise your hand. And learning how to play with these different thresholds it's one of the very important skills of convergent facilitation. Thank you. You're most welcome. So, 
Go ahead. So, um, yeah. So I my primary um, I wasn't planning on coming for the workshop, but uh, just your opening statement about intentions and commitments and what's living inside you and yet keeping the plan and sort of moving on to uh, patriarchy and things like that. I'm feeling deeply moved. I do plan to come now just from our conversation. Uh, my primary context is as a parent and I do uh, facilitate um, Dr. Thomas Gordon's parent effectiveness training workshops. Um, what I struggle with very personally, both um, especially at home with my children, they're homeschooled, is when I find myself being unkind. And this is a word that's been going around in my head a lot. So when I struggle with whatever I'm struggling with, whether it's work or deadlines or uh, things that I think I should be doing, um, then I find myself being more snappy and irritable. And I'm kind of wondering how, you know, I can, my, ki my, my kids have permissions to let me know when I'm doing that. So, and that's great for me because I get the feedback instantly, but I'm wondering what, how else. So my question is when I'm in a difficult space, how do I support myself? Yeah. Um, if you can create a few moments for yourself. The pause. Yeah. Then what you can do inside those moments, you can ask yourself two questions. One is, what is most important to me in this moment? And, and just make contact inside with that, what is most important to you in this moment. And then if that is not enough to release the tension, then you ask yourself a second question, which is what is most important to me in the long run? And almost invariably in the long run, it's not about whether your child will do the homework or not. It's about whether you can build a relationship of mutual trust that allows your children to thrive well into their adulthood, right? Yes. So Thank these you. two questions can help you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. I want to tell you that um, my sister, I used to have two sisters, now I have only one. Uh, one of them died and she started the whole project in the world of NVC parenting, but she didn't, she didn't manage to get as far as she wanted to get to because of being sick and dying. The other sister and I are beginning to write a book for parents. I, I don't, would know, love if, to, yeah. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if it will be ready in time for you and your children. But I want to tell you the title. Yes, maybe, please. Maybe it will make you laugh. The title is How to Raise Disobedient Children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tying back to the first conversation you had about obedience and patriarchy and all of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have, um, sorry, just piggybacking on that. So the book may take more time, but... Um, I'm sure that you've talked about it in other spaces or the, the whole parenting. I have, uh, if you haven't found my website, I have um, eight years of blogging that I have done about all kinds of topics. And there's definitely things there about, about uh, children and parenting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Mickey, there is, uh, I just wanted to check with everybody. Even though I said initially that we'll be recording and sharing it, in case somebody doesn't want their part to be included in the sharing, they can let us know. Okay. So you can put it in the chat also. That's fine. Okay. That's it. Thank. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, so you can edit a certain part out if people. Yeah, don't. I can take it out here. They yeah. don't want this. so they can feel free to ask also whatever they want to ask. Perfect. Thank you. All right, and come on, uh, Param, can you unmute yourself? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, mm, Mickey. 
Yeah, maybe speak a little louder if you can. Okay, okay. Miki, uh, this is Rajiv. I'm I'm uh, from Kerala, South India, uh, settled in Delhi. Oh, I was giving the microphone to someone else, to Param. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, so, uh, I don't know if, uh, can you, just, it's okay, go ahead, Rajiv, he says it's okay. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm a father of two daughters, um, um, 19 and 18 year old daughters. Uh-huh. Um, I, uh, was interested in de-schooling. I'm interested also in still interested in de-schooling and uh, uh, maybe no schooling, maybe. No? Correct? If yeah. I'm wrong, uh, please correct me. Uh, um, I tried also, in, in fact, uh, some when they were uh, some six year and seven year old. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But out of compulsion from um, um surroundings family members peers uh and uh, the immediate society surrounding uh i had to uh, re uh enroll them to the schoolings and now they are um, going uh, as part of it of the system of the school system and uh, i uh, as a parent uh, are, um, are you are you okay if I say something before you continue? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Which is, it is extremely difficult to do any kind of different parenting with your children alone. No, uh, uh, it, it's not alone. I mean, um, well, it is alone if your family and uh -huh. the surrounding. Uh, I don't mean alone without a partner. I mean alone uh -huh. without a community of support. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's extremely difficult, and I want to have a lot of tenderness for this. We live in times of transition. There are people here and there who want to raise their children in very different ways, and they get very discouraged because the parents, the uncles, the aunts, the the neighbors, um, you know, the people at work, are all going in a different direction, and it's extremely difficult to stick with it. So I just, um, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a solution. I just want to hold tenderness for everyone who's trying. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I failed in that. I failed in that. Now I am within the system only. Okay. Um, uh, and I am within the system which is extremely violent, which I feel, which reflects in my behavior also. I also I, uh, even though I uh, uh, want to be a, a more kind, more accepting person, uh, I find it difficult to be uh, a, a kind of a non-violent person, not in action only, but in words. In and behavior. in thoughts. In, thought in thought. And thought. Yeah, exactly, in thoughts. Yeah. So it's, it's extremely difficult to uh, uh, come out of this kind of a... Uh, embedded kind of a uh, yes. setup. So can you give me some suggestions? Can I give you some courage? Some suggestion? Do you um, have anything to tell? I would ask you, first of all, can you tell me why do you want to be nonviolent? I am nonviolent. I'm no, you're not. You're not. No, I'm. Sometimes you are, and sometimes you are not. Uh, what I think is, I am made to be nonviolent. There is a sense of a, uh, there is a sense of a, 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 a apparatus, you know, an apparatus which makes a, every every human being towards a nonviolent thing. Okay, that's theory. That's theory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What I'm asking for is in your heart, in your uh -huh. heart. What pulls on your heart to want to be nonviolent? I love, I love human, I love uh, nature, I love surroundings. It's just love, nothing else. Okay. So, um, 
And what pulls you away from it? When I feel uh, what, why ex what I expect about love, my concept of love, when I am not receiving it, I tend to be uh, more than what I am not getting. What I am getting, sorry, what I am getting. More violent, more, more aggressive than what I am getting. Okay, so then your practice can be the practice of vulnerability. To expose mm -hmm. yourself in the pain and discomfort of not getting what you want. Instead of trying to make it happen, to just mm -hmm. expose yourself. That can be the path. You mean, um, oh, uh, yeah, tell uh, me. Uh, complete, please, sorry. Uh, that, just that. Okay. Uh, I, uh, and um, I feel very agitated when, I mean, in the present city scenario, when uh, the, the smartphones, the internet, and every kind of, you know, um, kind of, uh, I mean, proper using, I don't know whether it's properly used or not, by when my children use smartphone in a, uh, in a um, non-productive, in my sense, in my sense, uh, non-productive method of uh, uh, using net and uh, plunging into abysses, um, I feel very agitated. And I sometimes, uh, most of the time, I shout at them. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you're not just committed to love. You're uh -huh. also committed to being right. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. yes. And if uh, right, right according to me. Right. And if you are committed to being right, it will eat away at your commitment to love. The commitment to love, if you surrender to it, means a willingness not to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So that's... Um, mm -hmm. and, and not It's not a commitment to like it when you don't get what you want. You can still be upset. Mm -hmm. But upset but, leads to agitation. Upset leads to aggressiveness. No, it doesn't. Only when you protect your vulnerability. If you allow yourself to feel the upset without taking action to correct what is happening in the world, you will feel more, but you will do less damage. Uh, so you mean like uh, be passive? No. You know what, Rajiv? This is more complicated than we can do here on the call. This mm -hmm. is, this is a longer piece of work than fits within a call that is for many people. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's some very, very deep baseline things that it's not like I can give you a tip. This is significant work that you need to do because you still see the world as either or. You either fight for what you want or you're passive. And there's something else and it's, in this short amount of time, it's going to be very difficult to get to it. Okay. Uh, uh, one more thing. It's the same thing which I face in the uh, in my work field also. I mean, I mean I'm a filmmaker. Um, yeah, uh, you will face it everywhere. You will face uh -huh. it everywhere until you change your relationship with your needs mm -hmm. and your willingness to be in the discomfort of not getting what you want without trying to make it happen or give up and go passive. There's something else. Until you're able to do that, you will keep shouting at people. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between collaborative working uh, with family and uh, workspace? Yes, there is a difference because in the, in the workspace, there's actually a purpose. You're collaborating in order to make something happen. You're not just collaborating to support each other. So it's, it's, there's, there, yes, there is a difference. So in the family, uh, collaborative is not something to happen? It's just um, uh, helping no, each other? No, you're collaborating just for love. 
to support each other's well-being. In the workplace, there's something else in addition. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna take the question from Param now. I can't hear you, so maybe you can write down what you wanted to ask. Um, Param, are you writing something? Ah, um, Mickey is writing in the chat. Yeah, yeah, but I was, I didn't, I wasn't seeing it. Now I see it. Um. I will tell you this much. Um, yes, I do want to engage with talking about structural violence when we talk, especially in, in the part of the workshop that is about working for transformation um, without recreating the past. I am not an expert in the particular form that structural violence takes in India. But there are certain principles of structural violence that exist across the world. And we can start there. And then local people um, can educate me about the particular forms that exist in India. But there are certain mechanisms that are core to any system that creates divisions between people. So the answer is yes. I don't know if, if you have any follow-up. Um, yeah. So that, that will be a big part of, of that part of the workshop. Thank you. Hello, Suda, a face that I'm familiar with. Do you, did you want to say something? I, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I said hello and I, I just got free, so I was hoping I'd catch at least the tail end of your meeting. Yeah, and you are catching it. Mm. Welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, you spoke about patterns. Was it patterns or practices? What are you talking about when you say patterns? Can you oh, the patterns of vulnerability? I'm not sure what you mean. Can you say another sentence or two? Okay, I, I heard you mention about patterns, patterns of vulnerability. So I don't know, if, was it practice of vulnerability or patterns of... Uh, what I'm saying is that we have a pattern of dealing with situations. So I want to know more about whether you're going to talk about it. Um, I, I am not thinking, I'm not intending to, and then if it, it might come up, but I'm not intending to do a lot of that kind of work because that is more of the individual personal growth work, which is absolutely not the intention of this workshop. That was my first deal with Shami that that's not what I want to focus on. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else that anybody wants to bring up? Yeah. Um, hi, Mickey. This is Akansha. Um, can, can you hear me? First of all, yes. I just want to talk. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm actually from Bangalore. And when I came today to attend the call I had no idea why I'm coming because I'm not really sure if I'll be able to make it to the workshop because of some prior commitments and everything um, but when I heard you uh, talk just the first uh, instance I was like yeah I, I I want to reconsider coming so I'm still not decided <laughs> but uh, I talk, am talk to Suma talk to Suma <laughs> <laughs> it's come just come. Yeah, okay. So I had this another thought. Uh, in any case, I'm, I'm uh, in Bangalore. So is there any chance that you will be traveling to this part of the country of India as well? No. Okay. So Jaipur is my only option. Fine. Okay. I, I want to say even more so. I don't have any plan of coming back to India in the future. Okay. I was thinking I'll ask you that, but okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I am I am I am right now very conscious of where I'm going and I'm going most places I'm going this is the last time that I'm going here okay uh, because I I want to um, really dramatically reduce my travel and focus a lot more on on writing and doing long distance work I mean you can still work with me from a distance okay Okay, then I, uh, I'll see how to make it happen for myself to come there. Yes. <laughs> um, I had one question. Um, like the workshop is pretty long. It's like for me, like it's like a week long. And uh, so I just wanted to know um, how it will be in terms of like, will we have a lot more activities and uh, or it will be... Um, more like sessions and presentations and things like that so so first of all I, yeah. first of all i want to say that in the way that i see things you decide for yourself how much you participate in what okay. and at any point in time if especially if it's a group a large group a hundred people if you want to do some activity, um, you know, let's say that involves movement or something like this or whatever it is, and you raise your hand at any point in time and you say, I want to go outside now and do some empathy in the body. I'm just making it up. There will be five other people that will want to go with you. That is part of co-creating. Co-creating doesn't mean we are always, all of us in the same room, doing the same thing in the same way. Part of co-creating is creating multiple spaces. Do you see what I mean? Yes, and I like what I hear, so thank you. Yeah. Okay. Shall we call it a day? Uh, can I speak a Ocean, Ocean, Ocean is raising your hand. A little more about standing up to power. These are not your words. Maybe authority. Who who is asking that? Wait, just a second. Sonal. Uh, Sonal. Where is Sonal? Hello. Hi. Yes. So, yeah. It's a very tricky thing because um, I am not advocating rebellion. Hmm. Because sure. re rebellion still operates within the terms of the person in authority. I reject your terms, but I'm still not creating my own terms. So for me, the ultimate freedom is how do I create my own values and my own terms about how I want to show up in the world. And if somebody else has power, how do I engage with them in a way that has respect but not fear? So that's, that's a big topic. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Ocean, you had a final comment? Oh, just a small question, and I'm coming back to um, the points Rajiv from Kerala was making. And you suggested that to go further into the topic of um, uh, feeling that discomfort. Uh, my question is, where can we learn or where can we hear something more about that? Um, I have a lot written about these kinds of things in my blog. Mm -hmm. Just look the top, I think, look up the topic of inner freedom. Okay. And uh, there may be also, if you're familiar with the NBC Academy. Yes, I am. There's... I have so many materials there that I, I don't even know anymore what I have there. Uh, but if you, if you look, you might find it. 
Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay. The uh, hi, Mickey. Just hi. A second, just a second. Let me, let me just, uh, there was a, a request. I just included that uh, thing. Okay, so there's another Sonal. There you are. Yeah. This Oops, I'm just... Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't have a question really. I just logged in because I was curious about the workshop. I'm attending it. Uh, though I have lots of questions, but not that I want to place it before. I think there's still going on inside me and I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I yeah I just want to place my thank you I guess I really liked and I think it's giving me uh, much more reaffirmation that I'm going to have a good time at the workshop and take a lot of learning so I'm just enjoying that and I thought I just wanted to share that with you that's all thank you so I really look forward yeah meeting you and imbibing things very sweet to hear. Very, very sweet to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think it's time to go. Shami, can you say a word or two? Um, um, okay, we'll take one last thing from, from Satish. Yes, right? thank you. Thank you, Miki, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I actually really hoping forward to learn more about life co-creation and how can we go forward in this. Before that, before going to the program, how can we more know about the program, what it is, a great learning, so that when we reach there, we have what uh, uh, we know really about what it is in detail. Uh, the only thing is, um, um, I'm happy to send materials, and you will get materials, and you can read and read and read as much as you want ahead of time. Yes. So maybe we're getting materials via uh, through Shami or directly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. And uh, I, I just wanted to say, if I that. Uh, Already around like, uh, you know, 80 people have registered and there are other volunteers. And so, you know, there'll be around, that's why I've seen the 100 people. And we still have a month to go. And uh, there are people dropping off for some change of plans, more people coming in. But I'm just enjoying the idea of synergy, which Mickey also said that so many people coming together. Like I'm seeing Sonal who is doing her own work. Rosie is doing her own work. And, uh, you know, uh, other people say, so, so many people in such diverse spaces, all this work is happening are coming together and so much co-learning has to ha will happen. And I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you everybody for being thank on this you. call. Thank you to all of you. And thank you, Shami, Look for forward sitting. forward to seeing all of you. And if you need anything from us, from my Instagram, please write to us. Any material things like that, we'll pass it on to Mickey. You know, any messages? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.